with increased awareness in minority communities, more lives could be saved. Let's give everyone a chance at life. Register to become a donor and let your wishes be known. Call the Sharing Network at 1-800-SHARE-NJ. We're back with my guest, Councilman Bill McKenna of Dun Ellen. No stranger to the media. Actually, we neglected to say that you were actually a, a talk show host in, in college. Yeah, a, a not so famous one, but uh, <laughs> one nonetheless. We, um, Chris and myself, we had a, a morning show. It started Sunday nights because we got the graveyard shift at uh, 10 o'clock at night, but uh, people started listening to us and it became a morning show. And it was basically, you know, music uh, mixed, interpolated with, uh, you know, just talk and we'd call skits. Skits, we'd call people at 8 o'clock in the morning, making sure they got the economics okay, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, I mean, it was, it was goofy, but we had a good time doing it. And uh, I think the, the community at, at Wesleyan appreciated that. And you kept your hand in in Don Ellen when you came back. You do some uh, broadcasting there, not broadcasting, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I do the PA announcing for the Don Ellen High School football and the official voice of the Destroyers. So, <laughs> uh, I, the, I, I've been doing that for three years now, and I, I really enjoy it because I used to play football. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the game well. I, you know, I don't. I work by myself up there. Like a lot of people have spotters and things like that. I basically do everything myself. I have my own. Like I play rock and roll part two when we score a touchdown. I have my little cassette player there. So it, it's a lot of fun. So at 27, I understand you know the game of politics well too. Uh, I think I do. I mean, not as I'm, I'm not as seasoned as some others, but I, I think my three, well, almost four years now, uh, going in November, uh, I have enough experience to uh, understand. Uh, you know the game and how it's played and uh, hopefully you know get things done the right way. You, you've won the respect of Mayor Robert Cedar who I did get a chance to talk to and, and uh, he tells me that uh, you and he have become very close. Yes he's a and I'm flattered he said that that's that, that means a lot to me. Uh, I, I think Bob's a good man and we come from other sides of the aisle. He's a Republican I'm a Democrat but it, again I, I think uh, politics at the local level and this is my feeling I don't care you know, at, at the state level and po national level, it's a different story. But when you live in a mile square town, the mayor lives two blocks away from you. Uh, yeah. How different can your views really be? Uh, you want to do the best for the town, at least you hope so. And you might disagree on some issues, which we have in the past. I mean, I disagree with everybody on the council at one point. But I let them know where I stand before a vote. And I let them know who, you know, how I'm going to vote. That way, they, under, you know, when they go into a meeting, you know, it's not going to become a shouting match. And it's one thing that was happening before I got there. And one of the reasons why I got involved, I saw a lot of people yelling and screaming at each other. And I was... You, you were know, going to council meetings? I went to council meetings prior to my election. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did see a lot of, uh, you know, name back calling. And forth, back and yeah. forth. yelling and screaming or not very, um, I guess, cordial uh, behavior. And if you disagree, it doesn't mean you have to be enemies. It just means you disagree. I mean, well, Chris and myself, we disagree on a lot of issues, uh, but we're best friends. The devils. Or yeah, de <laughs> devils <laughs> well, actually, we're devils. But the eagle. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm an old ranger fan, so. I see. Uh, but I, I'm a devil fan now, so. He also tells me, the mayor tells me, that he's sad that you're not going to be uh, running again. No. You, you've made that decision. You've uh, informed the town. Right. I, it, was, it was a tough decision to make. Uh -huh. I. I am stepping down. I'm not saying I'm not going away for good. Uh, with my new, I have a new job with. Uh, Tell uh, us what you do. Okay, I'm I'm the internal wholesaler for ING at the Financial Services. Uh, basically, what that is is I deal with mutual funds, 401k brokerage, and I I help companies and plans and brokers uh, mold retirement plans. And sometimes the job uh, does take some time, and I I am sometimes on the road. But it is a new job for me, and it's a new opportunity. I got a lot of responsibility, and I'm I'm blessed to have the job. And I don't think it'd be fair to the people of Denellen if I was to take this new job and then not focus as much as I did prior to this uh, on that job. And maybe by that example, hopefully it'll it'll impress on others that I do take that seriously. And it's not to say within a year's time, you know, I'll have my uh, mandate down at work and be able to to juggle those things again because I did enjoy being. So you're leaving the door open on that. Absolutely. But at 27, you're building your career, and uh, that's uh, a normal uh, milestone and in life. I'm, I'm single too. I mean, it is because of the the time it takes between my work and the council. Uh, sometimes it does. It's detrimental on my social life, and it's not a bad thing. It's just that 
I think right now it's the time I just have to step back and get my priorities straight and do what's best for myself. But at the same time, I'm not le like with the mayor. I told him my door is always open. Same thing with council members and mm -hmm. anyone has a question. I know what's you know I know what's going on. I can tell them what they have to do to get something done. Be more than happy to do that. That's that's part of who I am. You and know. and you told him that uh, the council meetings are not the best place to meet women. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, mostly it's people who are you know they're it, it, they're concerned because they they pay taxes and they have homes and things like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not a, a singles hangout. That's for sure. And but at the same time, it's a uh, it's important. It was important to me to help out because. Uh, well, you got your feet wet, yeah, and absolutely. you know what it's about. Right. And, and if you want to come back to it, I'm sure they would uh, welcome you back into the community of, of politics. I, I would hope so, and I, I think my, my tenure on there has been successful in that I've, I've been working diligently. And there are times, I mean, I haven't succeeded, uh, and times I haven't known anything about something, but at least I let them know uh, point blank. I don't, I don't know the answer to this, but I will get back to you. Well, that's something that I think anyone can respect. Uh, I don't think everyone, and that's what we learn in education, is you don't have to know everything. You just have to know where to go to find the information. Exactly right. right? And I have, uh, believe me, I'll be the first one to say, you know what, I really don't know the answer to that, but I'll get right back to you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you're not planning on leaving outright. You um, would like to uh, stay on some of the uh, uh, committees as a representative from that's the public at large. That's correct. Uh, one, of the, one of the committees I'm... Um, uh, deeply involved in is the Greenbrook Flood Control Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor has asked me to stay on after my tenure as councilman uh, because I've basically went to every single meeting in the three years I've been there. Uh, it's, a, it's a large project and uh, it's been 30 years in the making. Uh, my father as a councilman was on the Greenbrook Flood Control 25 years prior and he, you know now they're starting to break ground on it so uh, if again Vernon Noble uh, is the chairman and mm -hmm. he's been the chairman since the, the beginning, and his perseverance is the reason why uh, this is going forward. And also, I have to give my tip my cap to uh, Congressman Bob Franks, uh, without his help, uh, to get the federal monies involved and, and be diligent in that. I don't think this project will be going anywhere, to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, its urgency certainly came to the surface, so to speak, with the, with the problems of the flooding and everything else in the area. So right. Yeah. And it, it's kind of ironic because they, uh, the, Three weeks prior to the, the large flood in Bound Brook, which was totally devastating, I have friends that live there, and uh, it, it broke my heart to see what happened. They were uh, ready to break ground on, on the project, and the ground was so bone dry. Uh, it hadn't rained in, in weeks, almost months. Oh. And then when the rains came, they came, and mm -hmm. where they were standing was under about seven, eight feet of water when mm. they gave the presentation. So mm. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it is. It's just... And whether from uh, college or from your own experience, you have a very unique um, definition for the word politics. Tell us about that. Well, it, it's about people. That's, I think a lot of people, well, a lot of people that are involved in politics, I shouldn't say a lot, but there are some that lose sight of that. Uh, they get elected. Um, I think there are two kinds of people that do get elected, ones that truly care. They just do it because they love the town. They love something. There's a passion there. Mm -hmm. There has to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's part of it. Passion is very important in anything that you do. And the other, unfortunately, are people who have egos. And it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, it does happen. And I think those people lose sight of what actually an election is. And my political philosophy teacher said it best. When you get elected, a lot of times, say this is what, where everyone is because everyone's created equal. The people, when you get elected, some people think that you're elevated. When actually, you're, when you are elected, you serve. Mm -hmm. You're below them. Mm -hmm. You owe them that. You owe them to do a good work. Mm -hmm. You know, good day's work. And, and and that's what they say. You serve. Absolutely. Yes. You, yeah. you are serving other people, and mm -hmm. your job is to be diligent and to be effective and to do the best you can. And that's your philosophy, then. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. You know. And it's it's some people differ from that, but that's the way I feel. Uh, what is left to be done in Dunellen? What what is um, uh, still on the agenda that needs to be worked on? Uh, there there are several things. I, I think every town, uh, if if someone comes up to you and says, "Oh well, you know, we live in a perfect town," uh, it's not true. I mean, everything change is constant, uh, and no matter what you do, things have to be continually to be progress. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a situation where we have a sewer project we have to complete. Uh, that you know we have I believe it's 70 years old our sewer system and uh, we have to do some work on that mm -hmm. uh, the Greenbrook Flood Control Commission I mean flooding now with everything happening 
uh, the development of the uh, outer lying areas up on the Wachung Mountains. Uh, th that's going to, I think, compound the problems that we have. Not saying what was done was wrong, but it's, it's definitely not going to help the situation for towns such as North Plainfield, Denellen, Greenbrook, Boundbrook, uh, Manville, Middlesex. Uh, we're going to get uh, hurt even more now uh, with the development and with the flood control, uh, that, that's going to become a necessity. And I think also population. Uh, our kindergartens, our smaller grades, have 100, 150 kids. Uh, when I grew you know, I graduated with 61, so you're looking at a, a, a massive explosion. So we, sure. have, to, we yeah. have to worry about resources to the, the school system. We have to worry about tax base. And we have to worry about the, the citizens in general, because when you have more children, you have more responsibility. Uh, you have to make sure that they're protected, even walking, uh, simple walking home. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to make sure crossing guards are in place. Mm -hmm. uh, I joke with my friends, I mean, uh, as far as the roads being plowed in town, a lot of people say, you know, oh, they're just being plowed. I say, well, we have 27 miles of paved road mm -hmm. <laughs> at X amount of dollars per, you know, hour because of gas and everything else. These are things you have to think of. And, and in just a minute we have left, uh, the impact of other towns uh, now becomes, as they're all growing, becomes more relevant to what's happening in each individual town. Absolutely. So I, it's not just Dunellen, but it's the area. Sure, and, and I, I think it, people have to take a step back and see what Look impact. Look at the region. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, see what impact a certain project will have, uh, uh, not just on your town, but on others as well. Uh, because unfortunately, there are, you know, with, with growth the way it is, you have traffic congestion. I'm sure you find it harder every day to get home from work. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, you know, with the rain, you're going to have flooding problems that are going to be the 100 year flood turned a 25 year flood. Now yeah. it's going to be five year floods. Yeah. I mean, and that's not going to make a, a easy living conditions. A lot left. And uh, when, maybe you'll come back and see us again uh, when uh, you re enter politics. Yes. When do you leave? I, my term is up December 31st uh, okay. this year. Well, the best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. And I hope you come back again. Yes, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. And thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we'll be seeing you again on Meet the Leaders next week. So see you then. Good night.